Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello students, welcome to the organ printing course. So in the earlier lectures, we have discussed about uh, 3D bioprinting. What is 3D bioprinting? What are the different types of techniques available within this bioprinting? And then also we have discussed the first technology that is inkjet printing technology. So in this lecture, uh, we'll discuss about the second type of bioprinting technology that is extrosynthesis bioprinting. So in this technology, uh, basically this here, we extrude a material through a syringe using either using a pneumatic pressure or mechanical pressure in the form of filament and then depositing or plotting that extruded material on the build platform as per the design. So the bioprinter here, it consists of a fluid dispensing system and also an automated robotic system controlled by the computer. Okay. So the fluid dispensing system that takes care of the extrusion of materials. So materials here is mostly it's either a polymer solution or a hydrogel or maybe a nanocomposite material or different other types of materials, a fluidic material mostly is being used and that material is put into the fluid dispenser or inside the syringe and then a pressure is being applied on top of that the syringe so that the material comes out through the nozzle. So nozzle here, the dimension of the nozzle is in the in, uh, in starting from 100 to several hundred several hundred micron and then those material comes out when you push that material through that nozzle then it comes out as a filament so that filament basically we are putting that on a on the build platform and then by putting that filament as per our design we basically can create several types of or uh, we can make or fabricate different types of structures that's the that is extrusion based bioprinting, right? Now, the pressure that is applied on the extrusion based bioprinting for extrusion based bioprinting on, on the syringe can be of different types. Either it can be pressure time, that is, the pressure is changed, pressure can be changed with time, or it can be displacement time to extrusion forces, right? Now, printed here that can move in all, all three directions like x, y, z directions and deposit the filament on the field platform. In certain bioprinters, the printhead can move in x, y and the stage or the build platform can move in z direction. In certain other types of bioprinter or extrusion based bioprinter, the printhead can move in all x, y, z direction. So any type of combinations can be possible, right? Then the, as I also already mentioned, the extrusion based mechanism of extrusion can be either that can be the driven force for that can be either it can be a pneumatic driven pneumatic force that is pressure driven and here up like this is the range up from 5 to 800 kPa of pressure pneumatic pressure can be applied on that with this kind of system a bioings of low to moderate viscous like the range is 30, 30 to 6 into 10 to the power 7 megapascal millipascal second viscous biowig can be used and the second case of that is where it is a mechanical force driven like displacement driven where we are applying actually mechanical force for this for extruding the material in this case biowig is very high viscous biowig like almost more than 6 into 10 to the 7 millipascal second viscous biowig can be extruse, extruded with this kind of biowig so there are different types of bio uh, extrusion based bioprinters available some works on this pneumatic force and some uh, some work on this 
mechanical force. Also, the printhead, if you see the printhead can be of different types. Either the printhead can move in, move in x, y, as I said, or and in that system, the build platform move in z. In certain case, what happened? The printhead can move in all x, y, z direction. In certain other cases, where when the printhead can be stationary, it can move in only x, z direction and the build platform move in x, y direction. So, all any type of any combinations can be can work. But the most common type is the where the printhead moves in all three direction like x, y, z direction and the build platform is stationary. Now here other thing is to remember here the nozzle or not nozzle the syringe or the cartridge you can also get the cartridge the syringe can be put inside a temperature control jacket so that temp temperature of the syringe can also be controlled either we can heat up the syringe or we can reduce that or we can cool the uh, cool down the syringe so any tiny things can be possible so temperature control syringe is also very much required for to print certain type of biomaterials so that is also there other thing is the stage temperature can also be controlled so the stage can, we can keep the stage at height at 37 degrees centigrade at room temperature or below temperature depending on the requirement required temperature we can keep the we can set the reset stage temperature accordingly and we can print the structure now as i also already mentioned the either the the syringe suppose this is the syringe of the bio printer where it, it it will be or it is attached to the bio printer and then we say within the syringe we will fill the material so this yellow color thing is suppose this is the polymeric material fluid that we have filled within the syringe now we can and this is the nozzle attached to this syringe so the when if we push that material if we push the material it will come out through the nozzle in the form of filament right so here either we can apply the pressure by pneumatic pressure by air driven so or by mechanical pressure that is the piston drip, right? or even also by the screw suppose the screw is attached so based upon the threading the screw will be rotated and so that the when the screw rotates so it will push the material forward and by this way also the material will come out through the syringe and as well as in the form of filament and then basically will the, this extruded filament can will be deposited on the build platform or on stage right so this is the mechanism of extrusion based bio printing so this is the bio printer from 3d by uh, 3d bio plotter in 3d bio plotter from mbz tech it has different components i will describe in the next slide but let us see a video from our lab how actually this extrusion based dry printing is done if you see here this is the uh, syringe or printhead syringe is attached to the printhead and this is the nozzle that is attached to the syringe now when the, this is a extrusion yeah, pneumatic driven extruder so when we apply pneumatic pressure the material here we are printing some only gelatin solution so the gelatin is loaded to the by inside this syringe and then a pneumatic pressure is applied here you can see the 0.2 bar almost 200 here 2.2 bar pressure is being applied on, on this thing and then the material comes out in the form of filament that is being deposited on the print stage right now here the in Byzantech 3d bioplot the different components are shown here like we have this extruder two types of extruders are there here this is a hot extruder that means the temperature the syringe is in cap in in cast with the temperature control jacket so here the temperature can go from room temperature to higher temperature so it is good for any material where the printing needs to be done at higher temperature right for like for thermoplastic materials where the temperature the material should be liquefied before printing so that that hot extruder can take care of that part so now also similarly a cold extruder is here where suppose we need to print tape the material at low temperature like uh, less than and uh, less than room temperature so there also the temperature can come down so here this is the printed this printed move in x y z all three direction right so this printed so what will it will connect one extruder at a time so if it is the, the pump pump, then it will go and station here and then another cold extra will be connected and that will come and that will be printed so this is the stage here print bed 
and then when the actual printing is done then we have different other things like the needle calibrator so that we can calibrate the needle per stress and all these things are there it has different it comes with different accessories like it has stainless steel cartridges to be attached to this the hard extruder so the different types of cartridges are there and different types of nozzles needles nozzles are there so you can the nozzle diameter different uh, diameters of uh, nozzles are available so we can use different types of nozzles Oh, this is like it is how when it is connected to the uh, printed so this is the nozzle here the nozzle that comes out of the thing and then here we can so when we apply pressure the material comes out of this through this orifice right so this is uh, this is the 3d bioprinter from Invision Tech. these are the different components i mean extrusion based bioprinting system so most of the bioprinter like most of the extrusion based bioprinter they have similar components Maybe the attachment, maybe the geometry a little bit different, but most of them have similar similar components. Again, depending upon the capabilities, like the depending upon, or depending upon the functionalities, the different types of extrusion based bioprinter systems are available. Like some some are conventional extrusion based bioprinter, like that we have shown that, like here, this is a conventional extrusion based bioprinter. It has then there are certain bioprinters with high degree of motion possible like where the printhead can move in like suppose the printhead can move in an uneven surface also the printhead can move and it can basically it can print even suppose if the print the suppose the, the, the surface is uneven suppose the suppose the surface is like some some kind of thing then also the printhead can move in this thing also the print so the nozzle can actually can be rotated and that can be printed so this kind of nowadays this kind of systems are available and that is very good because in certain in certain cases we need to uh, the structure suppose the geometry is such that we cannot print like this if we can directly approach cannot approach like this so we have to do the print head or the nozzle can be bent and then it can be printed so that kind of possibilities are there now with high end extrusion based bioprinter that is possible then certain type of bioprinter like extrusion based bioprinter where they support bioplotting process so that is a different process where basically we can plot the material in a plot the materials as per our design so that is that kind of capabilities are there then support some kind of bioprinters that support cell aggregates so cell aggregates can also be printed some bioprinters they can do that so that basically what it does is basically go and pick a and make a cell aggregates and that can be that can be printed at certain a certain pre-designed location so that kind of possibility is also there and then other bioprinter where it is a it's not only extrusion based bioprinting other kind of bioprinting modalities are also attached so it's a kind of hybrid bioprinter where it can work with both like extrusion based bioprinting also some other kind of bioprinting modalities can also be attached so different types of capabilities are possible nowadays and it is all required because uh, Along with this course, when you discuss more about these things, I will discuss where exactly, like what are the limitations of current bioprinting technologies and what is required to reach the next stage where actually exactly like we can go for printing uh, solid structures like uh, kidney, liver, so this uh, solid organs. So where those are, those cannot be printed now, those are not being printed basically because the technology has not reached that stage. So we'll when we discuss that thing, that time I will be, I'll again I will talk about this thing. So what kind of bioprinters are like required for in the future for to tackle this kind of problems? Let's discuss some of the characteristics of this extrusion based bioprinting. Like if you see here, like we have in the earlier earlier sections, we have discussed about inkjet based bioprinting. There we have. Uh, we have discussed in detail about what is the possibility, how, what are the different characteristics of this. Now, in this case, we'll see if you talk about extrusion based bioprinting or extrusion bioprinter, the most uh, important characteristic of this, this, uh, this is highly affordable. Like many people, is like nowadays, uh, these printers are not very expensive, so this is highly affordable. So, anybody can use that. And these are not very uh, the uh, working principle also very simple so we need to feel uh, we so that many people can work the researchers early researchers they can also work on this technology so it is highly affordable it's highly highly versatile because this it has the capability of printing different types of different types of materials you can use 
any type of materials either it can be solubilized solubilized form it can be in the emulsion form suspension form so it can be in suspension form it can also you can also use different composite materials can also be used within this type of kind of things even we can use different cells cell clusters uh, spheroids all these different types of may can be used as a bio ink so this is highly versatile so we and also we can print uh, different different types of stress structure different types of structures 3d geometry whatever we can we can create the geometry and then basically we can fabricate that with this kind of bio printer the other important characteristic of this technology has the capability to fabricate complex and hollow constructs if you see uh, printing a complex construct is very very challenging but with extrusion based bio printing the that possibility is there definitely there so where we can definitely create a complex architecture because the process is such that we can design and then we can control how the uh, print head moves and how the material basically extrude to extrudes through that through the nozzle we can control all this and then we can print another thing we can also use uh, more than one nozzle at a time so more than like two or three nozzles can at can be at a time can be used simultaneously to fabricate complex constructs another thing hollow construct can also be printed because in the, we can create the hollow hollow structure within thing so that is that is also very possible so that's why this is the extrusion based bio printing is one of the most commonly utilized technique in in, in bio printing field especially and this this has been employed for printing different types of tissue structures like living cells different different types of cells have been printed with this technology and people have researchers have shown the possibility of printing like now it is more than almost like 50 or 50 to 60 different types of cells have been printed and the, I mean, the most amazing thing is the cells are very much alive after printing so that is the another important another important break important thing or uh, characteristics of this extrusion based bio printing so the different tissue constructs have been attempted and some of the different so and those are there are proof of concepts available where printing of different types of tissue constructs starting from skin to liver to cornea to muscle different types of tissue constructs have been people have been produced or fabricated with this uh, extrusion based bio printing techniques organ modules different organ models we have that is uh, organ models have been uh, fabricated with this extrusion based bio printing techniques so the, those, those those also that is also was possible and those uh, models have been used for different applications now organ on a chip devices that is that is another area where extrusion based bio printing is coming in a big way because nowadays uh, the the trend is to use in vitro models tissue or organ models for drug screening toxicity screening and also for different other applications so where also extrusion based bio printing has been has been used widely for developing this kind of devices so uh, these these are the things that has been already been done with extrusion based bio printing now why are extrusion based bio printing is widely used what is the advantage of doing that basically as i already mentioned some of these things are i have already mentioned but again let me uh, discuss a few more things like the because this technology has the capability to print high cell density bio ink right because if you see in our tissue so in some of the tissue the cell density is very very high like it can be of order of 10 to the 7 or 10 to the 8 like right? so it is like 10 million or 100 million cells per ml right in that that much dense so that much dense cell density can be printed within this by printing so that's that's a, that's a huge advantage of this technology because they are in that case then we are reaching somewhere very close to the native cell density and that is required for bio printing of this kind of structure where if we are to suppose we are trying to mimic that kind of tissue structure then that is very much required so then then we can get the function of the particular tissue so that's why printing high dense high cell density Near bio ink is a definitely is a very big advantage. Other thing is the high viscous bio ink for certain applications because we are trying to print something like some suppose we are trying to print centimeter size of 
few centimeters size of tissue, right? So there, suppose the, the requirement is that so that, that should be the structure should be self-sustainable. It should be stable. So to do that, certain cases we need to print high viscous bio with high viscous bio so that the stability of the structure is uh, stability of the structure is retained and the structure doesn't collapse. It is self-sustaining. So that kind of thing. So high density. So this. This bioprinting technology has the capability to print high viscous bioing. So that is another big advantage. Then the other thing is if you see an our tissue, then uh, the most of the tissue is not a single cell. It's like it's composed of multiple cell types, right? And those cells are arranged in it in a particular order. There is a hierarchy, there is a poise, different poisoning or locations of cells. So if we can create or if we would like to create that kind of complex 3D construct, then expression by, by by printing is a big advantage for in that case also because this technology has the capability to print complex 3D construct with multiple cell types and different using different types of materials. Right? Then the next advantage is the scalability. Now Oh, printing small structure is possible with different other technologies, but if suppose we are trying to reach somewhere centimeter scales of tissue where the we are talking we are suppose we are wanted to to print a big tissue with all the inherent complexity all different types of cells suppose inherent also inherent vasculature so the scalability is a big factor so this technology has got that thing right because with this uh, exercise by printing we can print this, this uh, tissue of different cells and we can also keep on doing that that thing with this extra this bio printing so that's definitely that's a very big advantage of this other thing is the commercial affordable now extra this bio printers are very much affordable there are many uh, many vendors or many produce uh, bio printers come by printing companies are available who provide this kind of extra by bio printing and those are very much affordable so commercial affordability is another advantage of this technology. So these are the a few of the ad, some advantages of this exosynthesis bioprinting technologies. Now let's talk about the evolution of this exosynthesis bioprinting. If you see historically, exosynthesis bioprinting technology evolved from that is called fused filament fabrication technology. That is where the thermoplastic polymers are used for printing structures how they are being printed these thermoplastic polymers are put inside a, a print through a print head the thermoplastic polymers are first heated to a certain temperature when they liquefy and when they are liquefied then they are being pushed through the nozzle then this molten thermoplastic polymer or liquefied thermoplastic polymer that comes out of the nozzle then basically we plot them those filaments we plot them into a and then we print, you produce the 3d structures now this extrusion based bioprinting has evolved from that uh, fused filament fabrication technology but here we don't have this simple only printed but we have a syringe where here we load the material and then if required we heat up the material so that material is liquefied then we apply pressure so the material comes out of the nozzle as a plain filament and then we can basically we can print them into a steady structure we can also load hydrogel polymer solution inside the same syringe and then but we can control the temperature so we suppose we did not to heat them we can suppose if you want to cool them we can control the temperature we can reduce the temperature of this print head and then we can the material can, can, can come out this thing so if you see historically at the very first like in past this extrusion based bioprinting was mostly used for printing only biomaterials where no cells are encapsulated or loaded inside the by inside the material only 3d printing of polymers are mostly used so like polymers like pcl plga pla all these things are either they can be in a dissolved state like these polymers are can be dissolved solubilized in a particular in a respective solvents or these polymers can also be heated up to liquefy and then it, that can be plotted so these things are possible and then later after printing the cell seeding was done on this kind of structures but here the disadvantage of this we can prepare we can produce very nice or complex structures with this uh, only printing only polymers 
but the thing is the later on we need to we need to seed cells on top of this now the cell seeding is a some in certain cases cell seeding is challenging because when the seed cells are seeded on these things the so cell attachment is not even they attach to a certain area not the whole thing so the uniform cells attachment is another big problem the other other other, uh, other challenge was we cannot achieve the cell density like the tissue because that much cells attachment is very challenging so then the so then the yeah, researchers have moved on from there and then in recent past like they have been printing with uh, bio inert material like alginate or some other material where this material these materials are loaded inside the syringe where the cell in certain cases cells are also encapsulated within this uh, material and this those are being extruded through the syringe and then that those are being print plotted or printed on the stage and different types of structures are made but the disadvantage is this this encapsulated cells that in certain cases it was found then there is a reduced cell viability also the reduced functionality of the cells because these materials are mostly by inert materials they don't support cell attachment as such so that is also the other problem now the recent trend what happens the bioactive materials are mostly used for printing of 3d structures and with in either cells are encapsulated within this within this uh, bioactive materials like some in uh, recently the cell instructive hydrogels are mostly used for preparing 3d structures because so that we can provide the necessary cues for or biological cues for functional tissue fabrication so the cell function can be fully established because now the with extrusion by printing the current trend is to mimic the tissue structure where so there is not only the structure mimicking structure also the mimicking function of that particular tissue so that's why the biomaterial or the biolink is very important and nowadays the trend is to print with bioactive materials so we slow that's the current trend when you talk about different bio different bioprinting technology then process parameters are very important so we need to control the or we need to modulate the process parameters so that we can basically we can control the or we can optimize the bioprinting bioprinting process to print a suitable structure like the viscosity of the material is very important for extrusion based bioprinting because the viscosity is the material that is that how the material will extrude through the nozzle that will depend upon the viscosity accordingly we also the pressure will be depend uh, pressure will be correspond to the viscosity of the material but for uh, extrusion based bioprinting the requirement is mostly the material that has shear thinning property so the rheological with the viscosity of the material it has a shear thinning property that means if we apply pressure then the viscosity of the material comes down or that is thinning of the material upon applying pressure so shear so that shear thinning material is uh, mostly used for extrusion based bioprinting so viscosity of the material is a very important parameter and we need to provide the we need to control or we need to modulate the viscosity so that it did the extrusion of the material or in a way bioprinting of the structure can be controlled or modulated right. the next parameter is the nozzle diameter now nozzle diameter is very important because this nozzle diameter basically dictates the resolution of printing if suppose your nozzle diameter is very good no, not nozzle diameter is suppose very fine then the extruded filament also will be very very nice very fine so the diameter of the nozzle directly depend correspond to the extruded filament diameter so the nozzle that's why nozzle diameter but the one thing is if we use suppose if we use nozzle a very very fine nozzle then what will happen the material we have to apply a lot of pressure for extruding the material or extruding cells that can cause some sometimes so that can cause cell damage because of this shear force that is acting on the cells so that due to the shear stress due to shear stress that the cell can get damaged so nozzle diameter we have to choose accordingly so if we choose low nozzle the very fine nozzle diameter the resolution will be very good but that can cause damage to the cells but if we suppose if we select nozzle diameter of very high nozzle diameter if it's a wide diameter then 
the resolution will be bad resolution will be not that great but th that will be good for cell viability so we have to somehow we have to uh, we have to work with this thing and then we can accordingly we can select the nozzle adapter nozzle type is another thing suppose we can use either straight nozzles or we can use either tapered nozzles it has been found that it has been found that when we use a tapered nozzle then the shear force or the shear stress generated only at the tip of the nozzle in case of straight nozzle the shear stress generated across the wall of the nozzle so that so we have to also accordingly we can choose different types of nozzle based upon our requirement other thing is the other process parameter the pneumatic pressure or mechanical force what is the how much applying pressure being applied that is also a process parameter and that is depending upon the viscosity and the nozzle diameter we can always we need to we need to control the pressure accordingly the another parameter is the extrusion rate the rate at which the material is coming out from the nozzle that is that is also a very important process parameters the extrusion rate uh, can be very high also but if it, the extrusion rate is very high again the same thing again it, it can may cause shear to generate a lot of shear stress and then that can, that can be a detrimental for that can be detrimental for the encapsulated cells if the extrusion rate is very slow then it can also the time required for printed structure will go high so accordingly we need to also same control the extrusion rate print speed is another parameter the, the rate at which the print head moves in the during printing that is the print speed so the print speed is it can miss it should be in accordance with the extrusion rate suppose in our case extrusion rate is we set a certain certain extrusion rate the print speed should be such that the material comes out that much so that it is, it is we able to make a very good line or structure if the, suppose the extrusion rate is low print speed is more then the material will not come out come out uniformly or we cannot print a very good structure if the extrusion rate is very high and print speed is low then what will happen the more material will come out and but we will not be able to make a, again good structure so then so the, we have to control both these things in accordance with each other the other requirement is the gelocent kinetics because for extrusion based bioprinting one important requirement is the what are the material is coming out it should be it should have fluidic it is fluid where fluidic nature when it is coming out of the nozzle but as soon as it come out come out it should be able to solidify so the this solidification process is very important or gelocent process of the that fluidic bioink is very important for extrusion based bioprinter so that we that can be achieved by different ways like either it can be some kind of chemical cross linking it can be photo cross linking or it can be also ionic interaction so any types of cross linking mechanism can be possible for gelocent kinetics we have a separate in the uh, later on in some lecture, lectures i will discuss more about this how this gelocent kinetics process can be controlled what are the different types of gelocent gelocent possible for this bioprinting we'll discuss in detail about this thing so thank you all for listening the rest of the uh, rest of the thing for this extrusion bioprinting we'll discuss in the next lecture thank you